Hello, and welcome to Philip Brown's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called Multicast Concept. Usually, when information is exchanged over the network, we will use unicast traffic. This is a point-to-point -point communication where there is just one sender and one receiver. Unicast transmission has a single source that sends out packets to a specific destination. It is a predominant form of transmission on local area networks within the Internet. Notice in the illustration that the video packets are sent from the server to all of the computers. Unicast transmission are one-to-one -one communication. But suppose that there were numerous client computers that all wanted the exact same information. For example, suppose they all wanted to view the same video images. If the server is using Unicast and there are a hundred client computers wanting the same video feed, the server will have to transmit a hundred copies of the exact same video packets, one for each client. There is a concept called multicast that allows the server to send only one packet and all 100 clients will receive that packet. Multicast traffic describes the communication which occurs between a sender and a group of clients. Idealistically, the server sends out a single packet and each router only forwards the packet out of the interfaces that brings it closer to a client that wants it. If there are sections of the network that do not want multicast packets, they will not get it. This is a one too many concept. In the illustration, the red computers want the video feed and the yellow computers do not. The routers only forward the packets out of the interfaces that have clients that want to see the video feed. Let's look at three types of multicast methods called dense mode, sparse mode, and sparse dense mode. In PIM dense mode, the multicast traffic is initially flooded throughout the network in order to determine which areas of the network need the traffic. It uses a push method here we see the multicast video server sending out multicast packets that flood the network. As the multicast packets flood out of the routers, the routers create a table of unicast IP address to multicast IP address association in the multicast routing table. Client computers can join the multicast group by sending an Internet Group Management Protocol join message to its directly connected router. Downstream routers would then connect to upstream routers using a PIM join message. Laptop routers that do not contain client computers actively requesting multicast traffic on their directly connected LANs send PIM prune message packets to any upstream routers to let them know that they do not need to send the unwanted multicast packet. In other words, there is no end devices that are interested in the multicast traffic. Now, as you can see, the multicast streaming video server only needs to send out one video packet and the routers will forward each copy only to the interfaces leading to clients. The dense mode flooding and pruning process repeats every three minutes. Because of this, dense mode is not considered to be efficient if your application does not have receivers on the majority of your LAN segment. Your network may experience unnecessary congestion during these periods. PIM sparse mode is a better method for using multicast over a network. It uses a pool technology. 
all the routers on the network, learn the network address of a specific router that is responsible for managing multicast streams called the rendezvous point. There are various methods for giving all the routers the IP address of the rendezvous point, and we will look at them in future videos. When the multicast video server wants to send out multicast packets to clients on the network, the router that it is directly connected to must first contact the rendezvous point and let it know. The multicast registers packets containing the physical unicast IP address of the server and the multicast IP address that it is using. The source tree from the server to the rendezvous point is created. Now, the server only needs to send out one multicast packet. Each router forwards the packet out of every interface that leads to clients who want it. The path from the rendezvous point to the client computer forms a shared tree. Eventually, the router that is connected to the client computer will use whatever is the shortest path between the multicast server and itself and prune any unnecessary connection. Now, the server only needs to send out one multicast packet. Each router forwards the packet out of every interface that leads to clients who want it. The path from the rendezvous point to the client computer forms a shared tree. Eventually, the router that is connected to the client computer will use whatever is the shortest path between the multicast server and itself and prune any unnecessary connection. When a router's interface is in the sparse dense mode, the interface will default to the behavior of dense mode. If the router learns of a rendezvous point, it will switch to the sparse mode and start using the rendezvous point. This mode is useful when you are transitioning the network from one mode to another. The multicast routing table is different from the unicast routing table. The table shows the unicast IP address of the multicast server followed by the multicast IP address that the server is using encompassed by parentheses. If the first part of the table has a star in it, it means that the route represents the shared tree rooted at the rendezvous point. The star is simply a placeholder to indicate all sources. We have looked at the concept of multicasting in this video. In the upcoming videos, we will look at the actual implementation. I hope this video has been informative and I thank you for viewing.